Hello and welcome to Sunday Worship. Uh, I welcome you to Black Hall St Columba's Sunday Worship for Sunday the 22nd of November. This is a special Sunday in the liturgical calendar. It is Christ the King Sunday, the 25th Sunday after Pentecost and the last in this liturgical year. Uh, next week, the 29th of November, is the start of our new liturgical year, uh, Sunday the 29th, the first Sunday in Advent. I'd like to welcome you, if you're a member of our congregation here, if you're a, a virtual member by the fact you watch online, or if you're just visiting for the first time, welcome. We have a number of activities and uh, going on in the church at the moment and the best way to find out what we're up to is to go online to the Black Hall St Columba's website I encourage you to do that but I have a number of notices just to highlight at this time we are moving forward with our plans to have a community nativity um, where knitted characters from the nativity scene are placed around the community area and we can have a treasure trail to follow around that nativity. I'll give you more details on that later. Uh, I can also tell you that with some COVID style tweaking of arrangements, we will be having our annual gift service. Um, gifts will be sought for children um, up to 12 years of age. Uh, new toys, unwrapped, uh, can be dropped off at the church up to and including our gift service on Sunday the 13th of December, after which we will get them uplifted and taken to Sochten Prison, where the children of, of prisoners will receive these gifts, um, and that will be looked after by Bernardos, uh, who, who determine who should receive these um, as you know, we're working really hard as well to uh, open the sanctuary for public worship um, and we are looking to do that on Sunday the 29th of December, next Sunday, first Sunday in Advent. Um, there will be restrictions in numbers and in what we can do, um, we will be allowed a total of 50 people, including myself and duty elders, uh, Donald as our organist. Masks will have to be worn uh, and we are not allowed to sing during the service. But it will be good to be back in the church uh, and for many it will be a nice opportunity to have a look at the, the refurbishment firsthand. Uh, we're instigating a booking system and I'm going to have details of that booking system on the written email that comes out with the service and I'm also going to have that on the website uh, when that is finalised. But it should prioritise those people who do not have a computer uh, and who are not able to join us as we live stream where the AV team have been doing a fantastic job and we're working really hard so that we can live stream next Sunday. Finally, please remember our Zoom fellowship at 11.15 on Sunday after the normal service time. Try to join us for that. Details again on the email and on the church website. The Zoom Fellowship is something we plan to continue next week as well. Even though we're in the church, even though we're live streaming, the hope is to still have the Zoom Fellowship. Uh, that ends the notes and the intimations for this Sunday. Uh, but as I said, please do look at the social media and the website. Our call to worship today comes from Psalm 100. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless 
his name. Let us pray. Let us today worship the Lord with gladness and come into his presence. Let us know that the Lord is God. It is God who made us. And we belong to God. We are God's people and the sheep of God's pasture. Let us enter God's gates with thanksgiving and God's courts with praise giving thanks to God, blessing God's name. Let us give thanks to God for God's goodness, for God's steadfast love, which endures forever, for God's faithfulness to all generations. Let us give thanks for all the gifts we receive. Lord God, you are our one and only king we confess our failures and beg your forgiveness for the other kings that we do kneel before money and materialism power gossip self-righteousness we beg your forgiveness we who are broken and torn apart by our own mistakes and conduct. Lord, guide us to be your servants. Lead us to trust in you as the only king we need. Direct our faith in your sovereign power as we strive to follow your son through the power of your Holy Spirit. We pray this in the name of Christ the King, Amen. I'm now going to invite Donald to do our scripture reading for us today. Donald. Hello. Our scripture reading today comes from the Gospel according to Matthew 25, verse 31 to 46. I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version. Matthew chapter 25, reading from verse 31, the judgment of the nations. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are the members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, you that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me. Naked and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, truly, I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away to, into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Amen. And may God bless to us this reading from his holy word.
Thank you, Donald. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Some time ago, uh, I spoke with you and wrote about the five marks of mission. I will, um, if you allow, recap. The five marks of mission originated with the Anglican Consultative Council, the ECC, uh, but they've got one wide acceptance amongst other Christian traditions uh, and have given various churches around the world a practical and memorable checklist for mission activities. The ACC have said that these marks of mission are not a final and complete statement on mission, but they offer a practical guide to the holistic nature of mission. Originally there were four marks um, by the ACC, but a fifth mark was added in 1990. Uh, they stated that they appreciated the missiological implications of God's creation and the crisis that it was facing. Uh, and they decided that a new mark of mission that captured this understanding was inevitable. Uh, they stated at the time, we now feel that our understanding of the ecological crisis and indeed of the threats to the unity of all creation mean that we have to add a fifth affirmation. I'd like to remind you of what those marks are. The five marks of mission are to proclaim the good news of the kingdom, to teach, baptize and nurture new believers, to respond to human need by loving service, to transform unjust structures of society to challenge violence of every kind and pursue peace and reconciliation. And the fifth, to strive to safeguard the integrity of creation and sustain and renew the life of the earth. I said at the time when I was thinking about these marks of mission that one of the things that struck me was how well the Black Hall St. Columba's mission statement to glorify God, to proclaim Christ, to serve others, dovetails with them. I feel our passage today from the Gospel according to Matthew does the same. It is from Jesus' own mouth, a practical application of what both the five marks of mission and our Black Hall St. Columba's mission statement is all about. In fact, all of the gospel according to Matthew is an explicit call to consider our own attitudes to those in need. From the Sermon on the Mount to this clear call in our passage today, a, a helpful approach to this passage might also be got through the prayer of Teresa of Avila, who wrote in the 1500s, Christ has no body on earth now but yours, no hands but yours, no feet but yours. Yours are the eyes through which he looks with compassion on the world. Yours are the feet with which he walks to do good. Yours are the hands with which he blesses all the world. I believe it is important that we as a church look at this passage and the marks of mission. And by the church, I mean both as a parish church here at Blackhall and the wider Church of Scotland. However, we should note from our passage that Jesus refers to individual sheep and goats. He does not refer to herds. According to this passage, people are to be judged by their own individual actions, 
not by the corporate actions of their denomination or the particular church that they go to. We both, as a national church and as a parish church, do well in many areas. Locally, we stand up for good causes. The Christmas shoebox appeal, the gifts for the children of prisoners, Fresh Start and the Leith Food Banks, uh, to name but just a very few recent activities. We run Bible studies, nurturing our congregation, and we attempt to reach out to the community to proclaim the word through our school chaplaincy and our services to care homes and similar initiatives. For all the good news I'm talking about there, there are probably areas as well, though, that we could improve on. I, I'm not convinced that we are where we need to be with that newer fifth mark of mission, to strive to safeguard the integrity of creation and sustain and renew the life of the earth. But as I said, this passage does not deal with the corporate. God does not see us as a corporate identity. God sees us all as individuals, fearfully and wonderfully made. This passage deals with how each one of us as an individual needs to examine how we are engaged with Christ's mission, his mission to the world. On a personal level, when do we feed the hungry, give water to the thirsty, clothe the naked or welcome the stranger? When do we look after the sick or visit the prisoner? The fact that Christ the King Sunday marks the end of the church's year invites us to a retrospective examination of what we have managed to achieve for Christ over the last year. As we move forward into Advent, a time where we should prepare for the coming of Christ, such an examination should encourage us to continue where we are doing well and exhort us to greater efforts where we are not. Another aspect of this passage from Matthew's Gospel is that it emphasizes that this greater good is not only about our love for the saints, it is not about how we treat one another at church or how we treat other believers. It is clear it is also about how we treat the other people we encounter the people who are different from ourselves, different gender, different race, different religious background, different economic situation, different in any number of ways, but the same because they are human and as such are beloved by God. Jesus talks about a moment of judgment. At this moment, it is clear that how we have treated others does matter. The affirmation of those who have fed the hungry, given the thirsty something to drink, welcomed the stranger, clothed the naked, and visited the captive resonates with the third and fourth of the five marks of mission. I've mentioned our Black Hall mission statement to glorify God, to proclaim Christ, to serve others. The wider Church of Scotland outlines its mission statement as follows. The mission of the church is the mission of Christ to proclaim the good news of the kingdom, to teach, baptize, and nurture new believers, to respond to human need by loving service, to transform unjust structures of society, to challenge violence of every kind and pursue peace and reconciliation, to strive to safeguard the integrity of creation and sustain and renew the life of the earth. 
These mission statements give a clear indication of intent. But themselves they achieve nothing without people to enact them. What we do matters. But what Matthew is proposing here should not be understood as some kind of works righteousness. What is striking in the conversation between Jesus and those who did or did not offer help to those around them is that they did not appear to know. When was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you, they ask. Or for the others, when was it that they did not? The works that are talked about are works of neighbourly love, done or not done, not with the intention of putting oneself right with God or earning God's favour, but done or not done because of a person's fundamental attitude towards the world. They are, in the language of Reformation theology, not works intended to earn justification, but the fruits of justification, the outpouring of a believer's love of God. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, there is no church without its people. We are this church. Wherever we are at this time, we are all the church. Inside these walls and out and everything it stands for in the world. We dedicate our gifts of time, talent and treasure to the church we embody with our hands and with our hearts. Lord God, this day as we pray for others, we pray for the coming of your kingdom. You sent your son to bring good news to the poor, sight to the blind, freedom to captives, and salvation to your people. We pray you anoint us with your spirit, rouse us to work in his name. Loving God by your spirit, bring in your kingdom. Send us to bring help to the poor and freedom to the oppressed. Loving God by your spirit, bring in your kingdom. Send us to speak out and proclaim your justice in the world. Loving God, by your spirit, bring in your kingdom. Send us to tell the world the good news of your healing love. Loving God, by your spirit, bring in your kingdom. Send us to those who mourn to bring joy and gladness instead of grief. Loving God, by your spirit, bring in your kingdom. Send us to proclaim that the time is here for you to save your people. Loving God, by your spirit, bring in your kingdom. Lord of the church, hear our prayers. Make us one in mind and heart to serve you in Christ, our Lord and King, who taught us to come together in saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. May we go forth to proclaim the good news of the kingdom. May we be always willing to teach, baptise and nurture new believers. May we in our daily lives respond to human need by loving service. And may we have the courage to transform unjust structures in society, to challenge violence of every kind, and to pursue peace and reconciliation. May we join together to strive to safeguard the integrity of creation and sustain and renew the life of the earth. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with us all this day and forevermore. Amen.